Welcome back. This is a report from the great land of Ukraine. It's been my privilege to go there to Russia and Ukraine now 47 times. I've got a goal to go 50 times, or oh, at least 50 times. Why should I give myself a limit? Uh, you know, uh, I want to say this before we get into the talk in Ukraine. I want you to hear this. I believe that the best days for God's people are now and tomorrow. I, I don't believe we're going to fizz out. I believe the greatest days are still to come. Now, I've got s- some evidence for this. I want you to come to the book of Revelation, please. I want you to come over here to Revelation chapter 14, and verses 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 14 and uh, verses 6 and 7. The last book, which is called the Apocalypse. The Bible says, Then I saw another angel flying, what does it say? In the midst of heaven. Don't forget that. In the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel to preach to those that dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Now listen carefully. I want this to sink down into your mind. The Bible says that God is going to have a message that is symbolized by three angels flying in the midst of heaven. In other words, everybody is going to see it. I want you to see this here. This is sort of amazing. There you got a picture of of planet earth. And then you've got this mighty movement going around the earth in the midst of heaven. Most folks don't understand what that means. I've talked to pastors. I've talked to elders. I've talked to leaders in the church. And I say, what do you think it means? These, well, they say, well, that's friendship evangelism. They say, that's, that's small groups. Well, it may include friends. What on earth is friendship evangelism? I understood we're all supposed to be friendly. This is not just talking about friendship evangelism. It's not just talking about small group evangelism that I believe in. It's talking about something bigger and greater than anything that we can comprehend. The Bible teaches that the gospel message in the last days is going to be the biggest thing in the world. It's going to be on television more than Donald Trump. (laughs) You hear what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's going to be bigger than Donald Trump. Come over here to Revelation 18 and verse 1. I was going to say bigger and better, but I thought I better not say that. Revelation 18 verse 1. But of course it is going to be bigger and better than anything. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having greater authority. The earth was illuminated with his glory. The Bible says that the earth is going to be illuminated. It's going to be ablaze with the glory of God. So I want to give you a testimony. I say this not because I'm a pastor and an evangelist. I don't say this because of that bias. I'm a pastor and an evangelist because of these texts. That's a complete difference. I I am motivated and I am driven to do this work and I believe in running campaigns where you've got a few people, (laughs) but I also believe in running campaigns where you've got hundreds of thousands of people People say, no, it can't happen today. That's because you don't let it happen. I say to church members, you are keeping the angels down with the cabbages. That's what church boards are doing all the time because some people seem to think that it is a sign of piety to stop stuff happening. You know, they're obstructionists. You know what I'm talking about. But the Bible tells me we ought to be positive. We ought to be upbeat. We ought to have faith because God is going to do a mighty work in our days. And I've seen a little bit of this. haven't seen a, a huge amount of this, but I've seen hundreds of thousands. I've seen millions. 
So remember this, God is in charge and we need not worry. I want you to say, I want you to say this in your mind. God is in charge. We need not worry. Let me talk to you about the revenge of the viper. Recently, I preached at a place in Havana, Cuba, that was called uh, the Viper. When the church leader sent us there, they said, you really want to go there? I said, send us anywhere. So they said, what about the Viper? (laughs) I said, well, if that's where you want us to go, we're happy to go to the place that is the center of demonism because greater is he who is in us than he who was in the world. So every night I was preaching in the place of the viper. It was hot. It was steamy. I was feeling fine. And then during the school of evangelism, on the, about the last day we were in Havana, I started to cough. And then by the time I got over to Atlanta, I was coughing a lot, and Beverly and I got on a plane to go across to to Rome and then to Prague. And on the trip across the Atlantic, I got really sick. I had a blazing fever. I was coughing and coughing. Then we got off in Rome, and we got a connection to go uh, on Czech Airlines and to go to this beautiful city. But there came a tremendous storm, closed down the airport for four hours. But they put us on this bus and they drove us out to the plane and let us off in the storm. So Beverly and I stood in the storm. I got absolutely soaking wet. And by the time I got to Prague, I was very, very hot. And a few nights later, I had trouble breathing. I woke up and I I found it hard to breathe. I had this gurgle down in my chest. Beverly had to call the front desk. They got a check doctor, emergency doctor, and he came at two or three in the morning. And uh, this stayed with me for about, I was there in my room. I couldn't get out of my room for two weeks. And I wondered, am I going to get there? Am I going to get to? my destination, because I was on the way to Kiev. And when I got to Kiev, I was still feeling hot and coughing. But I want you to know that the, and I say this, glory be to God. I believe that greater is he who is in us than he who is is in the world. I testify to this. I don't believe in cowardice. I believe in facing the foe. I believe in facing the foe down. And God put his hand upon me and God healed me. And I was able to preach in Kiev with these wonderful young people from Hope Ukraine TV and broadcast the message of Christ into 6.4 million homes. Glory, glory be to God. Now, Kiev is the capital. So I want you to know Jesus is Lord. Kiev is the capital of Ukraine, a nation of 44 million people. It was once part of the great Soviet Union. July 16, 1990, they got their independence. I was around when it happened. But since then, there has been turmoil and revolution. There has been a hot war with Russia In places where I preach the gospel, they have been fighting on the borders of Russia and Ukraine and thousands and thousands have been killed. And then, of course, Russia took over Crimea when, of course, they'd owned it for hundreds of years and most of the people there are Russian, but it brought international tensions. This part of the world is very familiar to Beverly and me and my team. In 1995, we went to Kiev. We ran there the first great evangelistic campaign, and this is what we saw. 
I come back to Australia, I come to America, and I look at people who've got no faith at all. I'm talking about church people. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about administrators. They say, it could never happen here. You know why? Because of you. You're the ones who stop it. You don't have faith in God. But we saw there the power of God when I went down to the the great auditorium that seated 15,000, 15,000. When I went down there, there were a hundred, this is a picture, 100,000 people couldn't get in. 100,000 people. We ran multiple sessions. You say it can't happen? Well, I've seen it. When people say to me it can't happen, I say that's because of your inexperience. You do not know God or his power. But the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now, I have a little video on location that I'm going to show you at the tomb of the patriarch. Hi, friend. I'm John Carter in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I've been to this world now 47 times. I come for one purpose, to preach the everlasting gospel of Christ to these people who do not know God. I am driven with a passion for Christ. I want you to be my partner in the preaching of the gospel to the countries of the former Soviet Union. Behind me is the man whom they called the Pope of Ukraine. This man who is the patriarch said, John Carter will preach here only over my dead body. Can you believe it? He was the leader of the great Orthodox Church and he said, the Carter Report team will come to Kiev and preach their gospel only over my dead body. That was not the smartest thing he ever said because just a few days before we arrived in Kiev to preach the everlasting gospel in the biggest auditorium in the state, this man, the Pope of Ukraine, dropped dead. I testify this is the truth. This is the man who tried to stop the preaching of the gospel in this land, a part of the old Soviet Union. The meetings went ahead by the grace of God, but not before they buried him on the sidewalk. He wanted to be buried. His followers wanted him to be buried inside this beautiful church. But the government said, never, never, never. He's not worthy. Bury him on the sidewalk. And they buried him out here. The priests of the church went out with wooden crosses and fought the militia and the blood of those people flowed in the streets. That's when we opened the meetings. But we saw the power and the glory of God. Don't listen to people, my friend, who say it can't be done. Don't listen to people who say it's not possible because we believe with God all things are possible. We went ahead in faith we had tremendous opposition even after this man died. They tried to close down the meetings every night. But by the grace of God, we carried on and we baptized 3,530 souls in the cold waters of the Dnieper River. Glory be to God. Can't you say with me, glory be to God. Jesus is Lord. And remember this, my friend, there's the man who said, the gospel will be preached over my dead body. And never forget it, Jesus Christ is Lord. That made a tremendous impression upon me. It gave me tremendous courage. You know, down through the years, I've had tremendous opposition. Uh, I don't tell people about this. But I've had tremendous opposition. People have tried to, to stop me from preaching this message. And I'm talking about people in the church. I say to them, remember the man who said, only over my dead body, don't mess with God. Amen. Yeah. Don't try to stop, my friend. Don't try to stop the preaching of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. We saw the power of God. Now, what did I find when I went there this time? Well, 
I found some amazing things. I found that the people are going through a time of testing, trial. They're going through times of suffering. Uh, we baptized thousands of people. We could have baptized even more. But I, I went along to one place. I said, this is one of the churches that you have established. It's got no heating. It's a, high, it's a rental, rented building. They said in winter, it's minus 10 or 15 degrees inside. And often there is no PA and there's no electricity. And this got a, a great yearning in my heart. I said, oh, God, help me to raise some money to get these people in out of the cold. I've met there the old babushkas, the grandmothers. It is now a collapsing economy. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Some have become discouraged. Some people, some old folks say, I wonder why. Some old folks say, I can't keep going to church when it's minus 15 degrees. And I can't even see the pastor. But I want you to know that God is not finished with those people. And when people get discouraged, I want them to know that there is light in darkness. And the purpose that I went to this place with my team was by the grace of God to light a candle in the darkness. It's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. I hear people all the time, they're cursing the darkness. Let's stop cursing the darkness. Let's light a candle. Now Jesus is our hope. I want to give you just a couple of texts here. I've always got too much material, I know. But Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. That's today. Deep darkness, the people, but the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Listen to this. Look at me. The greatest light is still to shine forth upon the church and upon the world. The greatest days are still to come. Now look at this text. We're going to look at Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27 and verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Am I going to be afraid of somebody? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? With God we should not be afraid of any man. Remember the man who said, only over my dead body. <laughs> we shouldn't be afraid, my friend. Here's another text, John 14, verses 5 and 6. John 14, 5 and 6. Here it comes. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Poor old Thomas said. Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is everything that we need. And the preaching of Jesus is the mighty power of God. I know. So we went to Kiev with a message. There's light, there's hope, and there's a bright tomorrow. And I want to say it to the television audience. I want to say it to the beautiful studio audience. Never, never give up. Never be discouraged. The best days are still to come. There's light and there's hope for you. Now, here's another message. On location. I'm standing here on holy ground. This is the site of the largest baptism in the history of Ukraine. In the year 988, Prince Vladimir came to this place, the Dnieper River, and there he baptized the inhabitants of this land into the Russian Orthodox Church faith. We came in 1995. And by the glory of God, for the glory of God, by the grace of God, we baptized in this river three and a half thousand souls into the faith of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. This place is sacred to us. We saw here the outpouring of the Spirit of God. We saw the power of God revealed. People came here who were atheists, all communists, 
unbelievers, desperate people, lonely people, and they gave their lives to Christ. They walked out here into the cold waters of the Niper River, 3,530 of them, and they were baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you in Jesus' name for being my partner. It would not have happened without you. And in the name of God, I say thank you and God bless you. So I believe that with God, nothing is impossible. And I can testify to the power of the gospel and the power of Christ. People say it's going to be a wonderful day when we see the latter rain, isn't it? Folks, I've seen it. I've seen him. I've seen the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God, but the best days, I want you to know, are still to come. Um, over there, the Carter Report team joined forces with Hope TV Ukraine. I'm very privileged to be associated with 3ABN here in the United States and in Australia. Over there, we joined forces with Hope TV Ukraine 148 young Ukrainian men and women, the salt of the earth. You know how much they're paid? $50 a week. You say, but it's poor over there. Not as poor as that. Many people are earning a couple of thousand dollars a month at least. These young people earn or are paid $200 a month because of the poverty of the church. Why did we go? We went because we wanted to do something extraordinary. And with this television station manned by 148 of the cream of the earth, we broadcast the message of the Lord Jesus Christ into 6,400,000 homes. Can you not say glory be to God? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's a person who came with me. Uh, and what a blessing he was to me. Um, the more I preached there, the stronger I got, and I got over this curse from the viper. But a person who came with me was one of my dear old friends from Australia, Dr. John Hammond, who is the director of Asian Aid, a marvelous organization. If you don't support it, you ought to. So here is a message now from my friend, Dr. John Hammond. This is John Hammond. What a privilege it has been to work with the Carter Report in Ukraine. You know, I've known Pastor Carter since he was a senior at college and I was a junior, and we always knew that he was going to be an evangelist, but only eternity will reveal the extent of this wonderful ministry. Kiev is not an easy city to evangelize. It is part of a society which has been largely atheistic and it is not always easy to be a Christian in the Ukraine. However, we have been thrilled by the response and faithfulness of our members there who attended meetings and the very large television audience that tuned in for the programs. Hope Channel Ukraine and the Carter Report team worked so well together, proving that there is no language barrier when we worship the one God. God bless the people of Ukraine and Russia who are waiting, hopefully, for the good news of salvation. I just want to say to Dr. John Hammond, John, you were a super, super blessing. Got to cut some stuff out. What was the aim in the meetings? The aim in the meetings was to uplift Christ, to preach the blood of Christ. The power is in the blood of Christ. We had extraordinary success because we were preaching about an extraordinary Christ. Now, we would not have done it without my magnificent team, uh, Beverly, my great wife, David, my son, Susan, who's worked with me for so long, her husband, Javier, Don, and Daniel, Pastor Velody, who was my translator, great translator, my daughter Leanne, John Hammond, and this is a tough one, Velashtraf Demian. I said that wrong. Plus 140 young people 
and all our supporters and all of our people like you. What was the end result? Look at the end result. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 11. What a text this is. Isaiah 51. So the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. and Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Look at me. The day is coming when sin is going to be no more, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death, no good, no goodbyes, because Christ, our Lord, is coming, and he is Lord of all. Hi, I'm John Carter. My wife Beverly and I were watching television the other night, watching the news, American news. They told us that the church in North America is actually shrinking. They said that atheism is the fastest growing religious movement today in North America. And people are saying, what on earth can we do to save the church? Well, of course, Christ died for the church. He saved the church. But what they mean is, how can we keep the church as a vibrant force in the world today, in Australia, in America, and in Europe, and in the rest of the world. Let me tell you a little story. John Wesley was one of the greatest preachers that the English-speaking world has ever heard. John Wesley came upon the scene of the, of the church in England a few hundred years ago when the church was dying. Like the church today, it was a shrinking church, but the people in the church were in a state of denial. They refused to accept the reality that the church was dying. John Wesley did something that uh, other people said couldn't be done. He revived the church through public evangelism. Did you hear that? He started to preach Christ. He preached the Bible and he preached out of doors and indoors. And the church was saved. Not only did he save a lot of souls, the souls of sinners, he saved the souls of the saints. Please join me, my friend, in evangelism. It's what Jesus did. Write to me, John Carter, Post Office Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California. In Australia, write to me at the address on the screen at Terrigal in New South Wales. Join me, my friend, in preaching Christ. Join me in public evangelism around the world. Thank you, in Jesus' name. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.